All right, so this was not supposed to be the video I made coming back, you know, since I haven't made a video in a while, but I've been playing quite a bit of Genshin recently, just chilling, you know, like experiencing Genshin as I like to. And I was like, holy shit, I love these characters. I love this soundtrack and I love this world. I've made two videos uh, critiquing Genshin pretty heavily. One you can find on this channel. It's a really old video. It fucking sucks. I so that being said, I have to take these two videos heavily critiquing the game, like like I fucking hate the game. But you know, I think about it and it's just like, what you know, what keeps bringing me back to Genshin? And I just decided to like write it out. Just like, hey, like this is why I still play this game that like I that I critique so much. And I, a lot of my videos are kind of like negative sometimes. Okay, well my videos in general, a lot of the times it's like. I use it as a as a means of like venting about certain things so a lot of the times they are simply just negative videos and there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion but this is a good way to bring variety while also talking about something familiar with the, with the channel that being genshin here here is why i continue to play this fucking game Here's the biggest reason why I love Genshin. If anyone here is like has seen my other videos, this one's obvious. There's a good variety of lore and character development heavy characters like Zhongli, Venti, and Mona. On the other side, you have simplistic characters like Shangling, Yoimiya, and Toma. And you know, one of the things I hate is when side characters are given too much screen time. So Shangling is a pretty simple character. She doesn't need a ton of screen time and the writers knew that. You can pretty much understand most of her character through her idle animations and voice lines. Now take a character like Zhongli. This guy has a shit ton of lore. It's constantly making reappearances. It has made his impact on the story and it's exactly because he is an important character. Like I hate to admit it, but Shangling isn't important to the story so naturally a character like her a side character should get less screen time in character development and this might sound extremely obvious now that i pointed it out but this is an issue that plagues many anime series and even some video games that i've played the characters in genshin have a ton of personality and their own quirks to them that make them unique specifically hu tao i know if i like her i'm just on a bandwagon but hold on and let me explain hu tao is a quirky character done right i typically hate the anime girl trope where they're just wacky and all over the place. Hu Tao just comes off as an eccentric and overly friendly character. And you could hear the other characters describe her as such. And now I heard she she got to rap. They, they wrote they wrote a rap for her and so like she was like performing it or something. Here, here's my thoughts on that. I haven't seen it still. Just because like I don't like watching Genshin videos on YouTube. Anime girls rapping isn't really quirky anymore. At least not in a unique way. It's been done quite a bit. But here's my thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually good. Because Genshin characters just have that going for them, you know? Where like, if the writers want to take a character in a certain direction, at the very least, you're gonna like feel the effort being put into it. With that said, there are some characters that are exceptions, but that could be me overlooking something. Like me personally, I'm not huge on uh, Raiden Shogun. And there, there was a quest I did recently with Kazuha where I felt like they kind of fumbled his dialogue in a way where like, it felt out of character for him. It was the quest with the uh, possessed sword and you know what I i'm actually willing to believe that i might be wrong with this because i don't i honestly don't remember much of like inazuma characters besides yoimiya toma and just those two honestly i like but from what i've gathered from from like what i know of kazuha the dialogue in that quest felt inconsistent with his personality anyways another thing i'd like to note is that i'm i'm not interested in every character uh, just recently, I've grown to appreciate Shen He a bit more. You know, at first, when I pulled for her, I kind of regretted it because I loved her design. That's why I pulled for her. If people know me, they know I don't... People are going to, like, fuck around and say it. I was like, oh, you know, you pulled her because, like, sex appeal 100. If anyone knows me, I, I don't I do not do that kind of shit. With uh, games that I play, anime I watch, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not that kind of weed. Just got to put it out there. And yes, you know, I, I can't leave her out. Going back to, like... You know, if you, if you know me, Mona is my favorite character in Genshin. She's cute, funny, well-designed, and she's really cool. Her development was a huge bonus too. It was definitely my favorite part of the event, but Xinyan was a really close second. For anyone that's played that event, it was extremely dialogue heavy. It, it was super dialogue heavy. They really overdid it, but regardless, learning about those two was really fucking great. You know, you know, Mona, she's not necessarily the greatest character ever, but I'm willing to give her the title... I'm more than willing to give it the title, like, the, the bestest, the best girl ever, you know what I'm saying, like, and speaking of the characters, I want, I 
kind of want to delve further into the way they're written and the, the designs and why I respect how these characters are made. I love how Genshin doesn't sexualize any of its playable characters. So before anyone starts listing off characters based off of their designs, hold on. I can do it for you. The obvious ones are Mona, Rosaria, and Ganyu, right? But here's my thing. They don't play into the super sexualized role despite their character designs. You know, they're, they're not just like a walking sex appeal. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they have actual like lore, personality, and backstories and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I've expressed many times that in, in Mona's case specifically, I do see the practicality in, in Mona's out, outfit, you know, with her design and shit. I do see it as like a practical thing. Um, you can go watch my, uh, I think it's the cutest char Genshin characters tier list that I uh, went on like a six minute tangent <laughs> on with Mona. But yeah, it's it's I think it's in that video. You can see my full thoughts there. Let's talk about other gacha games. Other gacha games need to rely on sexualizing their characters to even attract us gamers in the first place. In those games, the three characters I listed would be considered conservative, with Mona being more on the normal side. You see what I'm saying? The people who made Genshin characters don't feel this ridiculous need to over-sexualize their characters. You can even see it in the character art. The females are drawn with thick ass thighs and you can tell like this is gonna sound bad but i'm gonna say it you can just tell their proportions you know like i don't want to say it directly i'm gonna say it directly fuck it you can tell that they have an ass but their actual poses are either in the cute playful or cool side when you when i watch an anime or play an anime style game in most cases there's at least one character whose body type is their personality if you're familiar with anime like i am some examples would be you know the lolly that's insecure about her chest size or the fucking titty monster that responds to every situation with the same word and has the same hairstyle as every other titty monster. Genshin doesn't have this. Maybe Yai Miko is the only character that comes close, but even then, I wouldn't say she's sexualized at all. She fucking wears bloomers. You can't even see her, like, even cleavage at all. I at least I don't think. The only thing you see with her is parts of her thighs, her calves, and her armpit. That's all you can see with Yaimiko. The people that make these characters just seem to have this level of respect for the characters they create. A quality reminiscent of Kyo Annie and the way they respect their characters. And I know Amber is kind of trash, but that's only if you account for her gameplay. Other than that, she's a sweet character with extremely short shorts that still doesn't play into that sexualized role. Like, you can literally see the bottom of her ass cheeks, and she's still this playful, sweet, fun character. There's no like sexual thing going on with her. It's something that I'm really going to appreciate. Uh, you know, like I've been a weeb for a very long time and you, you go through certain phases, of course. There was a time where I really appreciated, you know, etchy fan service shit. But these days, I think I've hit the peak of my like <laughs> my own personal character development. And I gotta say, I really fuck with, I really appreciate this shit. Um, like just look at Jean and Barbara's swimsuits. If Jean wasn't in Genshin, her swimsuit would probably be a fucking micro bikini. You know, like in a medium where sex sells and horny characters create clout, I have huge respect for the people who made these characters without resorting to some bullshit because they could've. Or maybe not, I don't know if they were restricted by China's strictness on female bodies. And before I wrap up this section, I really want to nail what I'm saying with another example. The other day I was reading a review of the anime Fire Force I never watched it, that just felt like reading a review of it. The reviewer brought up how there's a character whose role is to basically be a walking sex joke. And as you could probably guess, the character in question is the one with the most skin exposure. You can basically see her tits in her like entire midriff. This is something that's always run rampant in any medium that uses an anime art style. So why am I bringing this up? Because we, Genshin players, have characters like Mona, Amber, Yula, Jean, A, aka Raiden Shogun, Deya, and Ganyu etc who dress in a similar manner but aren't subjected to the same kind of treatment most of these characters have been given development and we've even witnessed or have been informed on their growth as a character now whether or not you think the character development in genshin is good or not is another matter entirely i'm just saying it's something to be appreciated actual characters will always be much more memorable and charming than a shitty one note etchy character and keep in mind i really don't want to come off as like an etchy hater i you know i, I used to like it i was in a, I, there was a phase where i really liked that shit and i still do like it you know i i fucking i play azur lane it's just when writers think they can supplement personalities and good character writing with tits and ass you know going back to what i said you know i play azur lane there are characters in that 
that are literally just just sex appeal that's it but in the same game there are characters with sex appeal and personalities and character development those are the characters that i like not the characters with like fucking g cup titties and like thighs the size of i don't fucking know like just huge thighs the characters i remember are the ones that are actually characters i don't like boring people in real life and certainly don't like boring characters in anime either and genshin despite my issues with some of the character writing at least seems to try and shit when they hit they hit pretty fucking hard you know what i'm saying but that's why i love the character so much in this fucking game Now here's what prompted me to make this video. The music in Genshin is easily one of the greatest soundtracks I have ever heard. Definitely in my top 10, probably in my top five. I want to talk about uh, Qingxi Village specifically. The track that plays here is called Peaceful Hike and that name is perfect because I listen to this casually and when I need to relax myself. As an example, um, I remember there was a time where I was working a job that made me anxious and really nervous whenever or anytime i would make the drive there make the drive to work peaceful hike was one of the few songs in my like 1500 plus playlist at the time that could actually make me relax it helps that that it also played during one of the most memorable moments in the game for me just experiencing chingsi village the landscape the uh the atmosphere of the area the colors the soundtrack along with that was like, it just made it the most, one of the most memorable moments in, in Genshin. And Liyue Wei in general has some of the, my most favorite moments in the game. So far, I haven't explored Sumeru and uh, Fontaine as of, as of this video. Um, next up, Windless Cliffs. This track plays while you're exploring the surface of the chasm. Sometimes I just play this and lie down. And as mundane as it sounds, I'm not someone who can just lie down and do nothing. But this track invokes a feeling of like nostalgia and relaxation that made it possible for me to lie down for sometimes i haven't written here as an hour but there's no way it's an hour like i'd say like maybe like even like 30 minutes and not feel bad about not being productive even more than that it made me feel alone which is something i value i like being alone quite a bit even if i even if i technically wasn't alone it just it, it just makes me feel alone and for better or worse it it makes me feel like i don't have to care right now like right now like just fucking relax Stop fucking caring. It's like these like 30 minutes. Just lie down, chill the fuck out, stop caring. And I could go on about some more soundtracks, but then this section would get extremely long. I'll just throw out some other names. Um, Island of Crystal and Pearl, I think it's called. Um, to me, that's like the main soundtrack for uh, Watatsumi Island or whatever the, the Sangonomiya place is. Um, Fontaine goes insane. This was added uh, post editing, but I really want to say for Fontaine specifically, the soundtrack is so fucking good that I just want to explore. I want to skip what's left of Inazuma and skip Sumeru and just go straight to Fontaine. Matter of fact, the first time I went to Fontaine just to like unlock the area, I had to hold back just exploring it. You know, like I still ended up like going just a little bit, just a little bit, but I like, I really had to hold back there. Like stop swimming around, stop running around like the hills and shit. Just fucking wait it's not going anywhere but seriously the soundtrack it made me want to explore it so fucking bad the underwater tracks for fontaine is just some next level shit along along with even some of the overworld stuff like uh romero time recollection i think it's called amazing and there's one track where like there's like a string instrument i think where it, it sounds off key but that's the mat that's the magical thing about it it's like it's off key and it gives off this feeling that's like it's like hey we don't care about being on key or like onto whatever the like the musical term for for it is it just sounds like it doesn't care it doesn't care that it's being played super well and i love that because it's not like off key to the point where it sounds like shit but it's not super like uptight about like the the melody and i don't know if any of this is making sense but i'll see if i can find it and like put it in the video and just going off of that what i was just talking about that track it reminds me of a, of a track by nujibes one of my favorite artists of all time uh, arguably my top one he has a track called uh ordinary dro uh <laughs> ordinary dro ordinary joe where he he himself is playing the flute on the track i believe and he is just going fucking crazy and the the whole point of that track is just like just be free do whatever the fuck and that's what sounds that's what it sounds like he's doing on the flute and it's it, it's not like awful it's not like anything like that it's just it just sounds it fits the vibe of the song just have fun relax stop don't be uptight 
All right, next up is a really short section. Um, so as a Fontaine, like I said, I haven't explored all the areas, but I've seen glimpses of them, of, of Sumeru and, and Fontaine. I just gotta say, as a Fontaine, Genshin has this amazing variety of landscapes. Even if I hated exploring Inazuma and Enkonomiya, I can still appreciate these areas for being unique. One of my favorite things to do in the game is just taking screenshots with my favorite characters in my favorite locations. As you can probably imagine by now, I have like a million Mona screenshots and something happened recently with my SSD. It got like, it got fucked up. And unfortunately I lost all my screenshots from when I started playing Genshin. I was there from the start, you know, that, that was like my proof that I was there from the start. I mean, like I could still remember back when I first started playing, but just having those screenshots was, it was something different, you know, like, and I was very sad that I lost all those. I had like, like what, 700 screenshots. I remember some of them too. It was like a lot of them was just like when I first got like Noel, Sean Ling, and of course Mona, you can't replace that shit. All you can do is build up your screenshot folder again, but now I'm getting off topic. Uh, this is another one that I really want to touch. I really want to touch on because originally, as I read into this, originally I wasn't a huge fan of it. The gameplay. This is something that didn't connect until recently, actually. And this script was written a long time ago, so recently means like six, eight months ago. I have a very old video about me calling the gameplay boring, but here's the thing: I wasn't experimenting enough with the teams and different reactions, so it was a very flawed. Uh, perspective coming for me because i i didn't try to fully experience the gameplay before criticizing it um the team i used for a long time was ganyu shangling noel and mona here's the thing i, I just had to make point this out Le leveling up a character getting to like level 80 getting the artifacts and shit leveled up it takes a long fucking time so for a, a long time my best team and my only team really was Ganyu, Shanling, Noel, and Mona. And it doesn't help that I'm one of those people that it doesn't matter how shit the characters are. In this case, they're all they're all good characters. But I'm one of those people that I'll use characters only if I like them. So a lot of people say like Bennett is good, and I like him as a character, but his character design doesn't really do it for me. So I don't I, don't, I never leveled him up. I thought his uh his his playstyle was boring. Yeah, so the thing about the uh my Ganyu, Sean Ling, Noel, and Mona team was that there were so many reasons why they were in the same team, you know. I like their character designs. I think they're all cute. I all I like them all as characters. I think Noel and Mona are fun to play. Sean Ling and Ganyu in this team specifically were boring to play. So when I say that, it's like, why do I have them in my team? You might be asking. It's it's simply because Ganyu and Shanling are cute as fuck, and that's how I level up characters. When I first started, like, imagine like any like game game with anime girls. The character I leveled up is the one that I think is like either one cute or like two I like their personality or like three preferably both. And it just so happens that those four were some of my they they're still my favorite characters like even now. Yeah, I, I would attribute that as to why I didn't enjoy the gameplay or why i think i didn't enjoy the gameplay and all i had to do was simply just experiment with uh, different characters so fast forward to now and i have like eight different teams with very distinct goals in mind i don't know if goals is the right word very distinct play styles or at least somewhat distinct play styles i'll put it like that i'll make this section short by using one team as an example of why i think the gameplay in Genshin is good this team is one of my favorite teams. All of the characters can react with each other and because of that, it gives me more things to think about while in combat. Compare this to my Ganyu team. With that team, I literally throw out Goba from, from uh, Shanling, Mona Decoy, and shoot with Ganyu. There's not much room for creativity or thinking even. It's just do big damage. With this team though, I start with Yao Yao, switch to Mona, switch to Deya, and then Kiching. Or I start with Deya, Alt with Mona, switch back to Deya, and finish the enemy with Keeching uh, and Yao Yao. Or I can simply start with Mona ult into Keeching ult for quick clear. It's not Sekiro levels of gameplay, but I was very wrong to call it boring. As long as you have the characters, the ability to come up with some weird ass team comps is always in your hands. I like to mention my other team, uh, Chong Yun, Shen He, Barbara, and uh, Lynette. Very fun team, and surprisingly high amounts of damage too, with a lot of CC as well. That team was a lot of fun while I was using it. And this is off topic, but I gotta say, I remember watching a video on the difficulty of Genshin, and this guy was like, Genshin is too easy, and it's boring. People like this say shit like that, and then have characters like Hu Tao, Venti, Ganyu, 
Raiden Shogun or Zhang Li on their, in, in their team. Like, yeah, I wonder why the game is easy. People need to start picking up characters like Amber or, or Chang Yun, you know, and, and figure out how you can make them work or make them viable. It's going to take more effort than making Hu Tao work, but it's much more satisfying. And just having these characters as options gives you so much more room to work with when you're making a new team to keep the gameplay fresh, keep it fun, and you know, to just like be creative. Also, we should stop saying Genshin is easy because um, the devs, their solution to making the game more difficult is by giving the enemies more health. That's a, you see how much health fucking, what's her name has? Raiden Shogun has? Duck, it takes me like eight minutes to fucking kill her. And I don't even necessarily struggle with her, but her health number is like a hundred million. Like, it's fucking insane. Anyways, I think that's all I have to say about why I like Genshin. There probably is some more things, but I don't have it written down, and this script's been sitting here for like six months, so I assume if I had something else to say, it would have been on here. Genshin's a it's, a- it's a weird experience, you know? It's like, I play so much of this game. Genshin, weirdly enough, I- If you ask me if it's in my all-time favorite games ever, I would say maybe in like top 30, maybe. Because I do have a lot of issues with the game that I'm not mentioning here because this is a video on why I like the game. But me and my friends, were, we, we were doing a- uh, we're doing a top five like games, top 10 games based on enjoyment, like peak enjoyment. So it didn't matter if the games were good. It's just like, what's like your, what, what, what are these games for peak enjoyment, like top 10, top 10 peak enjoyment games. And I put Genshin up there. I put Genshin number one. Do you know why? Because fucking Mona is in the game. Because like the anime girls are cute. Because the music is fucking amazing. Because the, the world is so interesting to, to um, explore and like experience. Like, we could all write a laundry list on on the flaws of Genshin. We've all seen it. I'll be the first person to say, like, things I hate about the game. I, but I've I made so many videos like that before, and I don't feel like talking about that shit anymore. The reason why I treasure Genshin so much, this is gonna sound overdramatic, but it's because I fucking- I'm one of those people that I hate work. I go to work every day, I get my fucking shit done, but the fact of the matter is I fucking hate it. If I could not work for the rest of my life, I, I would not work. Straight up. So I value things that help me to detach from that shit and just like forget that <laughs> I'm a working adult. So Genshin, and if we're talking about anime, like anime, anime is like fucking like K on shit like that. Just like it just relaxes me instantly. And now that I put that put my uh, perspective out there, I guess it should be easy, super easy to see why I hold Genshin so close, despite having so many issues with it. I think I've said it before. I think it's like a seven out of ten game. Overall, the fact of the matter is, I love the characters, I love the soundtrack, I love the world, and characters are some of my favorite things in games and, and in anime. And I did say I, I was gonna try not to make too many Genshin videos. I know I, my last upload is probably a Genshin video, I think. The one like the one before this. I don't fucking know. I try not to upload like too much Genshin, Genshin, Genshin. I don't wanna be like a Genshin channel because that's like, I don't ever wanna censor my, my content around one fucking thing. But I really did feel like talking about this, because <laughs> I've been playing so much Genshin lately. It's just like an hour a day, 30 minutes a day. So yeah, if you made it this far, first of all, I really appreciate listening to like, me like ramble about fucking Genshin. Because this one, I can see why people would come through on the fucking tier list videos, but this one is just like, you're just listening to me talk about why I fucking like Genshin, and if you made it this far, I guess that's a good thing. I got Fiorina like I think like a month ago, and I'm still trying to get her fully maxed out. I don't, I have her artifacts, I have her at level 80, I need to get her talents up. But the fact that it's taking like a month, you know what I'm saying? Like, so experimenting, when I, when I very first started, experimenting was difficult. Because also at the same time, you need to like remember that this is turning like into why I hate the game. I, I don't hate the game, I'm just like trying to explain why.